right in the front of the house. Um, instead, they're not somewhere far away. And the bottom picture is a typical view of a Badga village. Uh, this day's Barga village, because you can see the cars and the whole thing. So you can see a row of houses with a elaborate a wide patio and every house had a small tiny gardens uh, around them. And because they grew their own fresh produce, um, most of the village they are growing their own fresh produce even now. So this environment itself is so calming and so peaceful and um, so next is the jewelry, what they used. So silver is a kind of symbol of Bargas. So most of the jewelries were uh, made in silver. Both men and women wore jewelries. Um, so they had finger ring, long chain, and an and a auspicious chain that, we use, that they, used, uh, they used in marriages. They had a neck choker kind of chain. Uh, that grandma who's on the picture, she would be wearing that. That is the typical Badga attire and grandmas would look like that. And armlets and the hip chain. All these chains are made, all these uh, uh, things are made of silver. And the nose ring, earring, um, the necklace, the pendant of the necklace are made of the copper. So the reason is that uh, below neck, um, copper I mean, should be used. And the reason the chain is kind of a choker is that um, the pendant is made in copper, though the uh, ch the chain itself would be of any material. So it is uh, there is a pit in the neck. So it seems that it seems to be that um, that copper pendant that always touches the the pit of the neck. So it activates the chakra there. Uh, so that would, uh, and the reason for the pendant is in spiral shape is that the positive energy seem to um, to be attracted with the uh, with the spiral or the round shape. So this copper, which is in round shape, would attract all the positive energies, and that would flow through the uh, body inside through the through that chakra. And uh, silver uh, seem uh, react. the mukuti or the nose ring it uh, act, uh, it activates the um, the marma point so that keeps the reproductive system of women a uh, very healthy uh, balancing the hormones and the uh, childbearing would would be very smooth and easy and men also wore uh, uh, jewelry they wore the earring that we see on the uh, the bottom picture, it is made of copper or gold with a glass piece in the middle of it. And they also wore kada on their uh, um, hand. So it is also said that um, jewelries and bangles uh, <clears throat> and the hip chain that they wear, that um, helps to prevent unwanted fat accumulation on the body. So this chain is... Uh, really an important thing that they use in uh, puberty, marriage, and funeral uh, uh, rituals. And this chain, <clears throat> um, we can uh, see more about this chain um, in the marriage uh, slide. Next is the childbirth and the care. So childbirth and care is really an important tradition among the Badagas. So certain procedures are strictly followed uh, even today. For the mother, uh, Interestingly, they give her hot bath, very hot bath, three to four times a day for 40 days. And as soon as the mother comes out of the bath, uh, a, a strict skin-to-skin -skin contact with the newborn should be made um, at least for some time. And uh, the special food they eat is the millet rice. And even today, millet rice is compulsory for a newly um, for a new mom and millet uh, rice with palm sugar. Palm sugar seem to uh, clear off the uh, uterus, clear off the any dirt or uh, thing in the uterus, so that that would make the woman's uh, uterus strong. And uh, they do a medicinal based curry called the sandege that has all the uh, spices. Um, they use all the spices and make a curry. 
and resting the back all the times is compulsory. So a newly delivered woman is not allowed to stand, walk, sit, uh, uh, at least until 40 days. She has to rest her back all the times. And after 40 days, she's good to go. She's good even to work in a quarry, but until 40 days, she's strictly needed to uh, rest all the time. And uh, a complete support system, support system is, uh, we can get a complete support system even today uh, in the Baragas community because they don't want the mom to undergo any postpartum depression. So they give a uh, complete care and support for the uh, woman and for the baby oil bath oil right from the day right from the birth uh, until 40 days uh, oil bath is very compulsory and they bath the child for bathe the child at least two times in a day and there is another uh, important uh, ritual called the seke mutudu so that is called that is a kind of warm massaging uh, i'll explain that um, in the next slide so next is the jakkalu kolu itu that means kolu is stick jakkalu is uh, one of the fruit uh, one kind of fruit in uh, badga um, in the Baraga tribes. So that uh, the stick from that medicinal tree uh, is used to stir the food that we give to the baby. Uh, once we uh, start the solids, they use that stick to stir the food, uh, stir the uh, food, the hot food, so that all the benefits of the stick leaches into the food and the baby would get all the medicinal benefits. And they also give uh, the Ore Marudu or the Ore Matire, uh, like they, uh, they do, uh, they take all these traditional herbs, they rub it on a stone and uh, they take that uh, paste and mix it with um, the mother's milk and give the baby at particular days and at particular times. So these, medicine, these traditional herbs include the Jadika, Masuka, uh, this called sembu sake. Sembu sake is that sembu upu sake. Sembu upu is kind of uh, red rashes uh, that the baby gets all over the body. So this sembu sake will prevent the uh, baby to get the skin disorder and vasambu, kalnaru and salt. This kasturi and gorachan are also given um, just twice uh, and in a very minimal quantity but giving that kasturi and gorachan uh, has a um, lot of Ayurvedic benefits. This is the Seke Mutodu, what we say. So this uh, this ritual is done on uh, on the 37th, 38th, and 39th day of the baby. So what they do, they get the twigs and um, uh, of five kind of uh, medicinal herbs. So I had mentioned the uh, medicinal herbs. So they take the uh, twigs of these herbs, they light the fire using that. And uh, they have uh, one in the picture, you can see one vessel has water and the other vessel has oil. Traditionally, they use the butter and the other one is the, um, the firewood pieces. Uh, so what the grandma would do, uh, she would put her dip her hand in the water and then she would dip her hand in the butter or the coconut oil. And then she would show her hand on the firewood pieces and get the heat. And she would transfer the heat to the body of the baby from toe to head pressing every uh, part of the body gently yet firmly from toe to head. head. So this gives uh, gains strength to the baby and uh, stability to the baby as the baby grows. And uh, this says how uh, medicinal knowledge and childcare knowledge uh, is, uh, uh, our ancestors had. Next, uh, their therapeutic art. Their art is the musical, uh, the music and the dance. They are uh, therapeutic in nature. Their musical instrument is called bugiri. Um, it is a wind instrument that is made of bamboo. Uh, it doesn't look like a flute, but um, it uh, looks like a dark, long in a wind instrument. So this instrument is placed on, is played on um, a funeral and some auspicious ceremonies. So. During funerals, the, the deceased, the relatives of the deceased, they would play this to vent out their distress. And this turns out to be very therapeutic that calms the people who are grieving in, um, uh, in the funeral. And um, also uh, it, make, it helps to uh, make a sick person to forget all the pain and sleep. And um, the sound of this would sound like um, a continuous sound of a fire or it might also sound like um, when something is rubbing constantly and systematically, uh, or uh, all must all we all are very familiar uh, 
with the sangu that is blown in the temple. So the sound of the musical instrument is um, uh, is somewhat similar to this. And the dance. Now, Barga dance is uh, really an um, a special thing of the Barga community. So it is a famous famous art, and it is important for all the ceremonies, right from the babies born all festivals, functions, puberty, any family gathering till the uh, funeral ceremony where the soul is departing from the earth. So in all the auspicious and all the functions, uh, all the ceremonies, dance is very important. And there are some uh, recent research studies that says this Bhargava dance has, um, has some impact psychologically and physical impact on, on the person. So it uh, psychologically uplifts the person and physically um, it is a great form of exercise. And the marriage custom. So this is the simplest form of the tradition ever. So the hills is divided into four groups. That means the, the people from one group are um, their forefathers are brothers. That means the people in that particular group, they all are brothers and sisters to each other, so they cannot marry. If a person wants to marry, he has to uh, find a spouse from the other other three groups. So this way, they had known that um, though generations ago, um, though the ancestors are like many generations uh, far, they had uh, the insight that after several generations also, marrying uh, someone from the family, it has a lot of impact on the um, on the genetical problem of the baby, they had got this knowledge and hence they had divided into Simi that is based on the brotherhood ship. And um, any uh, wedding can be happen across the Simi. So this uh, uh, prevents the genetic abnormalities and um, the, the cases of um, any genetical disorder or uh, uh, any handicapped or the autism, um, the development delays, all the cases, they were uh, almost nil a few decades ago. And now, even now, the cases are really, really small. So I would say it, um, it is because of the strong genes of our ancestors. And there is no dowry in the Baragas custom. And they don't wear any fancy jewelry uh, to show off the um, community. And their traditional chain, that is this chain on the picture, is called the kupige. That is the only chain that is compulsorily should be worn on the wedding. It has two kinds of beads. Uh, one is the so round bead, uh, where you can see small dots kind of bead. And the other is the hexagon shape of bead. Uh, you can see a little broad beads on the picture. So the round beads are called as the gundu. And the hexagon, I mean, the kusuru, um, that is, uh, that denotes a girl. And the hexagon shape of beads are called the gundu, that uh, denotes the boy or the male. So the meaning for this chain is that the middle thing is considered as a home or a family. And that family is, uh, can be uh, kept healthy only by the male and the female, the boy and the girl are uh, living in peace and harmony. So that is the reason for um, this particular ornament where the, the round pieces and the hexagon pieces are alternated, like two round pieces and one hexagon, two round. So that means men and women should live in harmony, should live together, only then a family would prosper. And they don't have a, a Mangal Sutra till um, the ancient didn't have any Mangal Sutra. These days they use, that is because of the, um, the modern trend they call and uh, uh, their procedure is that when a girl is married to a boy, she uh, plows the, their farm using a rake. So three times she just uh, pretends as if she's plowing. That means she has um, devoted herself to the family and the farming. So she would take care of the family then. So that's all the marriage is done. So it is not a very costly, fancy marriage. And uh, Divorce rates are, they were almost no divorce rates until a few decades ago. And uh, even now the divorce rates are very, very small. And the ancestors had no divorce at all. And there's no separation. If the, if the uh, male and female, they don't like each other, but stay in the, in the same family because they all lived in a joint family. They had all the support that they got from the, uh, from the elders and they didn't want to raise a child as a single parent. So even though 
they had no terms that they had terms that didn't work out uh, they did not separate they were in the same uh, under the same roof and over the period of time the the problem among them would have cleared and they would live a happy life so that is the reason where our ancestors didn't allow the for people to separate the husband and wife to get separated and uh, next is the death rituals so the this death rituals uh, is really a magnificent tradition and, and a noble tradition so this death ritual has uh, two main things one is the monday kododo monday means head kododo means giving so uh, the relatives the distant relatives the kith and kin who all come to the funeral ceremony they hold the heads of the uh, the grieving family the deceased family they hold their heads um, to their head and they show their condolences so this says they are sharing the sorrow they are giving their strength and hope and they are also emotional emotionally supportive and uh, next is the karu harsodu karu harsodu is such an important tradition it is the purification of the karma box um so this is cleaning the sins of the disease and they are transferring the sins to a calf and that calf is made to go into the woods and it is uh, from then onwards the calf is considered as sacred so uh, our ancient um, there our ancestors had uh, had made had uh, a framed uh, like a man could commit around 1300 sins in his life and during the uh, karu or so function during uh, in the at the funeral the deceased person would be laid on a cot and the village people the men would uh, surround the cot uh, except for the east so the deceased person's feet is towards the east and facing up the sky so the elder person of the village will do a chanting that has a list of um sins that um a, a person could have made in his lifetime so those sins this days it just seem to be um very a uh, silly thing but on those days those those deeds are really a sin say for example uh, milking the cow that has just given birth is a sin saying ill things about their own family or nation is a sin um separating the brothers of a family is a sin um not giving food to the hungry man is a sin uh plucking off the green plants is a sin um and uh, spitting on spitting in the water in the natural water is a sin getting into the water with bare body is a sin so these little little things are also were considered as sin so that he, the our ancestors wanted us to live in the path of dharma and they they all they always wanted us to uh live a clean life with no karma to be um accumulated in our karma box so in this way they make sure that the soul the deceased soul would leave this universe and go to the parallel universe uh and reach our ancestors having no sin and having a and by with a purified soul so their uh, day to day lifestyle is this uh, even today these lifestyles are followed uh, their um, food would be the is mainly the home grown food so they grow their own millets own grains and cereals they grow grow their own vegetables they grow their own food um that way they had made sure they they uh, had only the organic and the clean pure food the utensils they used were um, copper iron and bamboo utensils they used uh, bamboo baskets for storage purposes and copper for uh, consuming food and iron to cook food and always he eat with hands and only sitting on the floor the first food they cook that morning is first offered to the crow so one thing crow is uh, considered to be sacred because they uh, believe a uh, crow is our ancestor so our ancestor had come to um, get some food and other thing is that they had maintained the biodiversity by feeding the the nature's children and the first bite uh, while eating the first bite is always kept separately on the floor this is like offering food to the earth earth has given us the food and they are offering the first bite to the earth and then they eat the rest so this way we can see how uh, respectful they are towards the earth and how um how uh, lovable they are towards the nature and there is always extra food uh, kept in the pot they would not clean 
clean the pot uh, fully. That, that is because uh, for two reasons. One is that anytime guests would come and bargas are, uh, are very uh, um, familiar for their hospitality, they would, uh, any person, be it a known person or an unknown person who comes to a barga house, he will not leave the house without having food. So they would compulsorily feed the person and then send. So this extra food is kept because um, anytime if a person comes and he should be fed, he should not be sent empty uh, stomach. And one thing. And the other thing is that our Bhargava tradition has um, uh, one procedure that once if a person of the family dies, immediately they would feed the person the food that they made at home and then they would perform the other rituals. So if there is no food and if there is someone who uh, in the family died, then immediately they have to cook new food, but that is against uh, against our community law. They, that deceased person has to be fed the food that was cooked um, when he was alive. So, and for this reason, they always keep some extra food in the pot. So this says their vision about the physical universe and the parallel universe. And these are some uh, wild fruits. They are uh, some homegrown uh, wild fruits. Uh, they are only um, found in the tribes and in the um, hills of the Nilgiris. So uh, many of the uh, fruits, um, I, I only know the Barga name. I don't have the um, English name. So a few are the salmon berries, the golden berries, and the, the bamboo shoots. The bamboo shoots are, um, a bam now the bamboo shoots is not in uh, use because those trees had gone extinct. This is a sad part, but bamboo shoots are uh, one of one of the traditional food that was in our every like a kind of staple food uh, for the Bargas. And um, the tree, this novel tree or the Neri Mura that I said, uh, a tree that is kept along with the stone. That tree is this tree. It is called the Naval tree in in Tamil. Uh, in Telugu, Hindi, they are called in various uh, by various names. So staying under this tree will increase the prana shakti, and the pure oxygen can be uh, inhaled, which will energize the body and mind. So every part of the tree is useful. So this tree is used for um, various um, uh, medicinal ailments. I mean, various Ill, uh, Ill illnesses like the dyspepsia, eczema, and um, all these things. And the cereals, the pulses are, they are homegrown. They eat them fresh. And now it's sad that fresh is, uh, it is available, but not uh, that much in abundant. We use the dried ones, but our ancient, ancient um, ancestors had very fresh uh, uh, beans and pulses that they homegrown in their own kitchen garden. And uh, different types of um, greens are their main source of vegetables main source of these days we talk vitamins minerals but they had no idea about vitamins minerals but if you can see they had eaten all the food groups uh, and that is their wisdom so the one the right on the one on the right is the buckwheat and now sadly buckwheat is uh, barely available in the nilgiris but buckwheat was one of their um, one of their homegrown food and amaranthus and various millets Amaranth and millets were also their staple food. So in this plate, you can see uh, the various food that, uh, the food they ate every day on everyday basis. The white thing is a millet ball and the black thing is the ragi ball that is also a millet. And the other one on the triangle thing that is a, a kind of pancake made of the buckwheat flour. And the, on the left are the greens and they had cow and cattle so the milk or the curd they used was very fresh and fresh from the cow that grew in a sattvic environment and the middle one are made of uh, are kind of um, you know a chips kind of thing and on the right is the beans that we saw the pinto beans thing so they had no idea about the food groups but still in this modern days if you see they had all balanced food in one meal so that says how knowledgeable they are. And some important lifestyles are that they always wake up only on the right side. So because the right side, it's, um, it has the 
uh, it uh, activates the Surya Nadi. So it helps to uh, gain all the energy from the sun and keeps us energetic throughout the day. So even right from a newborn baby, when they pick the baby from the bed, they turn the baby to the right side and then pick. If a, if a child or a person uh, goes, uh, if he's, uh, he's moved out uh, or um, if he's tensed or something, the oldies will ask like, did you wake up on the right side or not? So that means waking up on the right side was such an important thing in the uh, Paragas tradition and everyday bhajans are kind of part of their lifestyle. And so skipping a bhajan is almost impossible. Uh, so being in bhajans, we know the positivity that we get from a group worship and seeking blessings from other elders. So any Bhargava person uh, would see a person who's elder to him, he would bow to that elder person. So the elder person would bless him with the palms of his hand. So in this way, the fingertips of uh, the fingertips are known are known to uh, emit all the uh, positive energies. So the positive energies from that person would enter into the person who is seeking the blessings, and hospitality and forgiveness, humanity. These are to, these are some of the very basic qualities of a Bharga person that is always in their genes, and holy ash or the vibhuti is a compulsory. So the significance of holy ash is that it activates the chakra in the forehead and also holy ash is used for um, uh, various uh, healing purposes and uh, holy ash is mainly made of, of made of the cow dung and um, the aroma from the ash, it relaxes the mind, um, the holy ash would gain energy, it relieves someone from distress um, people would apply on the forehead and also on the ear lobes and in the tip in, in the pit of the neck. Uh, I mean, pit of the throat, uh, so that all those marma points are activated and the energy that the holy ash has absorbed would uh, enter into the body. And another technique to keep the evil eye uh, away is that masuodu. Masuodu means uh, they say a small chanting prayer and they they take a few items in their hand and they um you know um they show it on the right side on on the left side they're in a circular motion so that those thing, things will take off all the negative uh, vibrations around us so they use uh, uh the dried red chili salt and one kind of a grass uh, that we use to use as a broomstick now that grass so all these they um, they spin around us to uh, in the clockwise and anti-clockwise direction put it into fire so that that would take off all the uh, negative energy from the person so that uh, the person is free of the um, negativity and when someone is uh, frightened so uh, they would do a technique called the katiniru that means that person is made to sit in a place uh, in the middle of the room and he's covered with a blanket or a sheet and uh, cold water is taken in a, um, in a plate and the sickle or the iron rod is heated to red and when the person is in the uh, inside the blanket someone from the outside he would keep the hot red um, iron rod in the water immediately that makes a kind of sound the sur sound and they say that the, bright, the frightened person is now normal. But the science behind this is when a person is completely frightened, the, uh, there is, uh, the astral energy from him has gone out. That means there is a vacancy in him. So that vacancy is paves way for other negative energies to enter him. So it has a time frame for that, that that person's energy has gone, gone out and uh, some negative energy would fill in that place. So within that time frame, they would do the Kadhiniru so that the person, the, the energy that had gone out of that person would come back and uh, he comes back to normal. And the other is the Gai Madhu. Gai Madhu is that uh, when the air in our body is um, collapsed or um, is not balanced, sometimes a the uh, 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 the dosha or something, the person would have a, a facial palsy uh, kind of thing. So at that time, they give them something to eat uh, that comprises of the onion, salt, little jeera, little cow dung, and another 
uh, medicinal plant called the pulyare. So when the person eats that and swallows, he would quickly recover from the disorder. And firewood ashes uh, were used to treat um, skin disorders like herpes. Uh, and cleaning the cow, uh, houses and the surroundings with the cow dung, uh, cow dung is considered auspicious and it is followed every day. Um, they also use some natural plants for their hair care and they use the charcoal, uh, salt and honeydew for their oral care. So seeing our ancestors doing all these things and also seeing that uh, most of the traditions and most of the good things that they did are vanishing now <clears throat> that means that says like that asks us where are we heading now our ancestors were uh, so bio um, symbiotic with the nature once the colonization had started that nature had destroyed so this colonization has started around 300 um, around um, for 300 years by the um, occupation of other people other uh, people so there the destruction had started so this rich land is now threatened by the monoculture of the tea plantation and some income based crops like uh, potatoes and um, other stuff so this is this monoculture had um, you know declined the soil quality the grassland had degraded and besides tourism and other development activities like the constructions of building resorts and all that stuff they had completely degraded the natural vegetations the sustainable plants like the lemongrass are completely destroyed we have to take steps and uh, we have to relive it this conservation of the cultural biological diversity along with the ecological sustainability is really required now so as uh, our sage scientist Ramana Maharishi said, first learn your own culture. Learn how the sage scientist uh, had contributed to the culture and incorporate it in your life. So this ancestor way of symbiotic relationship in the path of dharma will guide us to live in accordance with the nature. So it might take a long uh, years, but one step at a time would definitely help in, in future. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Priya. So I think we are running out of time, but we can take one, one or two questions. You couldn't unmute. Okay. So Kamala, comments from Kamala. So beautiful. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Uh, let me check another. Thank you for your offering, Sweta. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, so right now, can you, yeah, if you have any questions, you can unmute. Um, all right. Okay. I think it's a eye opening. Um, excellent, Vamsi says excellent. Uh, I think uh, it's, uh, mm, there are uniqueness to the culture, uh, but it's also the ancient, ancient Indian culture overall, you know, uh, many of the things are common, but there are some things that are very unique, like the birds and uh, uh, I think the, uh, you know, the information uh, is was very useful uh, for people to really think, uh, you know, how we can preserve our culture. Um, back in india or it could be anywhere in the in the world i think the um the modernization has destroyed um, most part of the world you know in native americans or any other culture so i think uh, it's high time we preserve uh, our culture and uh, this is an eye-opener and there are a lot of things that uh, you know even the lightning of uh, 
thing with matchsticks. Um, it's a technology, amazing technology. And then, you know, if we can modernize this, um, the moment we modernize it, it becomes a problem. But, you know, here that we need to be protected also, you know, in terms of patenting and other things, you know, many things have been stolen from this culture and uh, we need to fix this it's it's big time we create this awareness and uh, that's why this youtube will be available for everyone to view uh, it will be broken i think i lost some of the thing in recording i think in the, in between but there will be two uh, broken sessions and then there will be posted so that everybody can uh, see this watch this for later and uh, very useful information so thank you thank you mohan priya and thank just a um, couple of uh, quick uh, announcements so we have a um, uh, retreat silence retreat in june 15 uh, august 15th to 18th in mount shoma and there are two families can fit or if there are your uh, singles you, can, you know seven or eight so that's the maximum number of available spaces for now and um, so if you anybody is interested please let us know and our tst course like morgan priya did our tst course uh, transdisciplinary science and technology and she's now understood well how important um, you know how this can matter to her course can change uh, the way we think so if anybody is interested in tst 101 course we teach a lot of things in depth subject where you know thought provoking things that can change your life and um, the the other course uh, that we have is for higher dimension course um, with from three professors if you're interested in that uh, please let me know and our varma course is also opening people who have already took the want to reattend or people who wanted to attend the Verma class, uh, it'll be, uh, you know, opening soon. Uh, I'm just waiting for, it's a very small group. Verma class is usually a small group. And um, so, and the youth career accelerator is again coming like now we have, we saw the, uh, listen to the talk of Surabhi, very uh, in-depth thought provoking um, things that modern uh, kids learn and how they can incorporate many of the things that from this awareness is needed is not available for people even though we are here for we learn a lot of the western side but you know we need to do uh, research on both ends uh, taking the bad part of there is a good part to the west and the, and the bad and as well as the bad part to the uh, other culture also every culture has its plus and and the minus so we need to we need to balance this. So if we take and fuse the good parts of cultures, we'll have the best. So I would, uh, you know, um, suggest you to uh, give, spread this awareness to your uh, your kids um, and other um, other uh, uh, kids that are available around you know, in the in the age group uh, 13 uh, plus, so they can make use of this opportunity to learn uh, online. Uh, the youth career accelerator which is starting next week so uh, thank you thank you priya for this wonderful talk can we see your uh, face if uh, i know you have with little uh, kids and uh, you know it's difficult but at least you know people know who is uh, priya okay thank you am i visible thank you thank you all right yeah, you're visible. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.